butt! Any last words? Just give me your name. When the gatekeeper to hell asks who sent you, tell him it was Shinobu Jacobs. Yes, sir. Enjoy your trip. No More Heroes 2 is the sequel to a story about a loser who plays video games, consumes anime, and kills people with a beam katana. The game follows Travis Touchdown. Well, a majority of the game follows Travis, but what I want to talk about isn't that section of the game. Instead, I will talk about the other section of the game. Today I'm going to talk about Shinobu Jackson, and something I've decided to call ludonarrative empathy, and with this begin to touch on the broad and small topic of black and brown women in video games. Shinobu's story is actually a flashback presented as Shinobu explaining to Travis her time spent defeating two assassins to help Travis move up in the ranking. Shinobu has a lot of different motives for this, but there are two that are prominent in the context of the character's relationship to Travis. In the first No More Heroes, Shinobu was a young assassin who fought Travis after a severe misunderstanding. In this battle, Travis cut Shinobu's arm off, and then, unlike every other boss fight in the game, Travis chooses not to kill her. Shinobu, a strong believer in a code of honor, begs him to kill her, and is instead left begging for something he will not give. In No More Heroes 2, her character begins to exist as something outside of being just another person for Travis to fight. Thus, the journey into ludonarrative empathy begins here. The word ludonarrative has, thankfully, been explained and explored in other directions on YouTube, but the concept of ludonarrative empathy is something I would like to introduce and explore. Ludonarrative empathy is what I'm going to call the emotional experience the player feels when controlling their character and can be found in many different forms. The easiest way I can think to shorten it is, I want them to win, and it's my job to help them win. You see, No More Heroes follows an ignorant, generally foolish, and overtly comedic character within Travis. In real life, I would probably not enjoy being around Travis Touchdown, and in fact, I have never enjoyed being around gamers as a whole, so there's that too. But through experiencing the No More Heroes franchise, I have spent hours playing as Travis, and thus something about this trashy child of a man has something to appeal to me, and I do, on some level, want him to achieve his goal of revenge or escape boredom of life, or whatever the excuse is there to blast that catchy theme again. When the game shifts control to Shinobu Jacobs, who is voiced by the amazingly talented Kimberly Brooks, we experience something different. When No More Heroes 2 changes control of Travis's beam katana to Shinobu's metal one, we are asked to empathize with Shinobu's journey and on some level, her very personhood. While playing as Shinobu, we find that people underestimate her, we find that she is actually very competent, and we also find... not much else. A major trait of hers is her attraction slash respect for Travis after being defeated in combat by him, which outside of the story has no real bearing on gameplay, but at the very least this is still an aspect of her character that we might consider while we're cutting down enemy after enemy in her quest to assist Travis. It helps that the gameplay is still good, No More Heroes as a franchise is more enjoyable for its wild character moments and dialogue than its frankly generic and repetitive combat, but the combat and gameplay is designed to be played, and the game isn't so long that the combat begins to turn into a painful romp. Shinobu, like the jobs present in the game, serve as a moment to make the repetitive gameplay less repetitive by adding a jump and removing an attack. This is where we really get to know Shinobu as a character, where we can connect this back into the concept of ludonarrative empathy. You see, no matter how generic or blank slated the player character is, the way they perform actions, move, grunt, or in No More Heroes case, save and um, recharge their batteries, these are all traits for that character, whether intentional or not. Shinobu has a flashy sword combo that ends in a taunt. What does that say about her? Shinobu uses finishing moves. Her lack of two attack buttons causes you to jump around more and dodge more often, which might cue you into the differences between her fighting style and the way Travis might do things. What I'm saying here is, the gameplay makes Shinobu less of another hot girl in this game. It helps her stand out even more than with her brown skin. That and the fact that she doesn't get killed by Travis. 
Actually, that's not the only thing that Travis does not do with Shinobu. I can't. I feel like that pervy teacher in a porn. There are a couple things going on here besides the obvious humor. There's a lot of femme fatale imagery with Shinobu, as with the other women in the franchise. But Shinobu is a black woman. She isn't just existing in the world as a woman, nor as just a black person. She must experience the world as a black woman. Her existence is intersectional with these experiences. So, with the basic femme fatale imagery, she receives the imagery and tropes of the Jezebel and the tragic mulatto. If you're unfamiliar with these, think of the hypersexualized black woman, and that's a Jezebel. As for the tragic mulatto, there are better sources to really break down and get into that concept. This scene specifically illuminates both of those tropes as placed onto Shinobu. Remember earlier when I informed you that Shinobu's gameplay is based on her recounting her fights for Travis to Travis? In this act, she is creating a connection between herself and Travis. She's telling him her side of the story, and you, the person playing the game, are experiencing her story as she conveys it to Travis. You know her story a little bit better because you played it and experienced some form of hardship or challenge to actually finishing her story. Even if you barely know Shinobu Jacobs through playing as her, you have gained a small fragment of empathy for her experiences. Or maybe, like Travis, we didn't part. feel anything. Yeah. Wait! Something wrong? Nah, it's nothing. The next sucker's all mine. This video was made possible by my patrons and general support. Thank you to everyone from the bottom of my heart for your support, and I hope to see you next time.